हेलो हेलो गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन वेलकम टू आवर पॉडकास्ट सीरीज ऑफ एस हैक टीवी आई एम थ्रिल्ड टू बी हेयर विद यू टुनाइट फॉर व्हाट प्रॉमिसेस टू बी एंगेजिंग एंड इनसाइटफुल कॉन्वर्सेशन आई एम अंशिका योर होस्ट होस्ट टुडे एंड जॉइनिंग मी टुडे आवर एस्टीम गेस्ट आयोन रॉय सो let's start our session sure let me ask you some questions <laughs> can you introduce yourself and your expertise in your field along with its future scope sure so thanks to the isac team for giving me the opportunity to uh, to come on this stage and to uh, share my learnings experiences and all those things So hello everyone I am Ayon Roy currently working as an executive data scientist at a leading market research firm that goes by the name Nielsen IQ and my expertise is majorly towards the data domain where I utilize the data science uh, machine learning and artificial intelligence uh, expertise that I have uh, gained or I am learning currently with uh, certain courses with uh, my industrial experience and all those things so I have been doing that uh, since 2000 Eighteen, I think. To, to the, I joined my BTEC in two thousand seventeen, and I graduated in two thousand twenty-one. So I have been doing data science AI and since two thousand eighteen, and uh, like since uh, since two thousand eighteen, I have been to multiple hackathons. I've done multiple internships, and that's how I have grown my data science uh, skill sets. And that's how I have been building projects and got a job as an executive data scientist. Alongside that, I also lead a community called uh, Kaggle Days Meetup Delhi NCR, where uh, enthusiasts, the data science enthusiasts like me, come together, discuss, learn, and network. So that's a short intro about me and what I do, and uh, like yeah. Great to hear that. Okay, so how should someone with no prior knowledge in this domain start participating in a hackathon? Any suggestion, roadmap? uh so it's like i will uh like i will go back to my initial days when i started participating in hackathons and when i also didn't have much of experience in data science to say or in any specific technology to say so it's like uh whenever you are going to your first hackathon maybe or you don't have a very big uh grip over a certain technology i would rather suggest that go to hackathon not from not only from a winning perspective because you also know that you need to learn a lot go to the hackathon ideate like the, your initial hackathons should be from a ideation perspective that okay how can i think of a problem statement how i can build a solution which solves a great problem statement that's existing in the society while alongside seeing that what other teams are building like that's where you you would be understanding that okay this is where i am currently lacking or these are the things that i currently need to learn these are the things that i need to focus more on so being into hackathons being as a fresher definitely helps from ideation perspective and also thinking that in which direction you should be putting your efforts in uh, because you are seeing the people who might be in fourth year or third year and something like that so you can see that okay how do they build things what are the things that they use to build uh, their projects so that can be a great value add and how should you start it's like there are no guidelines to start participating in hackathons just just start your uh, just start participating in hackathon so that you get the first and exposure and as you go as you participate in more and more hackathons you will learn along the uh, line okay so as a mentor what key points should be emphasized when working on a project uh so this would again be coming from my personal perspective as a participant what i used to keep things in mind when i was a participant and also as i mentored and judged hackathons now so what i what are the things that i would usually suggest the people so one of them is the problem statements novelty whether it's needed or not like there is no point in building a similar solution that is already existing right because in a hackathon you are there to participate there to build something 
build for something which is not existing now, which is a big problem, but that needs a solution. So one is the problem statements novelty, what solution you are proposing to it. Second is whether it's scalable or not. Like you can build a solution thinking that it's a hackathon project, but we also need to think that if this hackathon project goes beyond this hackathon and is converted into a startup, can this take the load of millions of users? Can this, uh, can this uh, application be served as a microservice, as an API or something like that, so that it can handle the traffic, it can handle, uh, it can handle the normal software engineering things that you can think of. So I would focus on the project's novelty, the project scalability, and then how you communicate. Because uh, there is a saying that jo dikhta hai, wo dikhta hai, right? So you need to showcase that how much uh, how much potential your solution is. What are the various things your solution solves for, and why should someone use your solution? At the end, there should be a value add, right? Like if anyone is using your solution, there needs to be a value add. You book Uber, you you order through Zomato. Why? Because these offer services to you that they offer a ride, they offer food being delivered to your home. So that's where whenever you are building a solution, always make sure that you communicate these things. Also making sure that how will you scale to multiple millions of people and whether this solution is really needed in this world or not. Uh, I think you are on mute. I could not. Okay, sorry. What are the what are some essential tools and techniques aspiring data science should familiarize themselves with? Uh, so this again, uh, like I would be talking from my personal experience how it started for me. So it's like whenever we are starting a data science journey or AIML journey, things are majorly from how much can you start from the basics. People usually go into the trickiest or the com most complex algorithms. But that's not how it works. You should start your things right from the basics, be it statistics, probability, and then familiarizing yourself with Python tools like Python. I would not say tools, but uh, programming languages like Python. And then when I talk about uh, tools, there are multiple tools like Docker. So you, you, a lot of people might un, might think that what's the role of Docker in data science, or uh, like how can how can Docker help in data science, or how does software engineering concepts help in data science. But when you are starting, make sure that your basics in statistics, probability, linear algebra, and calculus are clear. Like while I would not say that you need to be a mathematics champion to be a data scientist, but at least you should have that knack or have should have that interest in learning those mathematical concepts. And then try to utilize your logic building, problem solving skills in Python, how you can convert certain uh, problem statements solution into a code, right? Because we might have a very good solution, but there should also be a way that how we can convert those uh, solutions that you're thinking of into a code, which can finally be executed. So Python, then as you as you grow, grow over time in your data science journey, go to uh, libraries like NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, Seaborn. And then once you have hands-on with this, try to make a project, small project, which utilizes all these concepts because that's where you will be getting confidence that, okay, yes, I know these things. I know how these things function. And even you, if you need to go to an interview or you need to explain these things to somebody, you have that uh, power or you have that uh, capacity to explain to them, right? So for that, your basics should be clear. So the, these are the uh, stepping stones, I would say. And then as you grow, you would definitely need to jump to certain advanced libraries like uh, like maybe PyTorch, TensorFlow, something like that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can you recommend internship platforms? Are internship usually domain specific? Uh, so when you are starting your journey, so like I will I will break this into two parts. One one part was which are the platforms where people should usually go and uh, look for internship opportunities. So usually what I used is first first and foremost is linkedin you should be you should be utilizing linkedin as a platform very much effectively to look for internship opportunities second is platforms like internshala where you can go and search for uh, search for certain uh, organizations which are hiring for certain roles and then third are uh, like let's say angel.co so angel.co if you write it now redirects to some other website but there is a website called angel.co 
which helps you to understand which are the various startups in which you can go and work these are remote there are greater chances that you will get a remote internship or something like that which makes make, which makes very good payments because those are remote right remote in the sense those are based out of india so they pay in their own currency so you also get to earn a little bit more and you also get to learn a lot more in during this internship so these are the three platforms and amongst all of them the most powerful is linkedin why i'm telling this because this is the place where you can network with people you can directly talk to someone who is in that organization understand which type of projects that they work on which type of tools that they work on what are the various things that they would look for in an intern or if they are if they were to hire you what were the various things that they should be looking forward to in your profile so you can directly ask them and then boost your profile then uh, i would say improvise on your profile accordingly okay so how do internships in data science contribute to professional growth and provide value in real industries sure so this this comes to the second question that you were asking in the previous one right like should the domains mm -hmm. be should the internships be domain specific or not so why i'm touching this upon it's like a lot of students feel that if i want to go to a organization which is fintech or an organization which is health tech i need to have a very vast experience in that domain that then only i can enter that uh, industry as a intern or something like that but the industry also understands that these are freshers they they know technological stuffs but they need to be taught about uh, the domain specific things like what are the various keywords in finance what are the various uh, keywords in healthcare or something like that people uh, understand within the organization so domain specific internships i would not say doesn't help but when you are starting your initial journey do not bound yourself with very domain specific things that okay i only want to do internships in uh, this uh, company i only want to do internship in that company at least for the initial first internship make sure that you spread your wings uh, wide so that you can look upon that what is the biggest or the what is the best opportunity available to you and then take the decision and coming to your uh, question on whether data science internships really helps in grooming yourself in the industry or in the real world exposure to say so i would say uh, this is again uh, from my personal experience because i did around uh, 20 months of internship in my 48 months of btech so uh, so in these 20 months whatever i have learned uh, like definitely there were courses that i learned from there were people from whom i learned from but the learnings that you get while working hands on in a project and uh, i'm not talking about hands on in a project that is self self project because self project might not have that strong deadlines might not have that scalability thing keep in uh, keeping in mind but when you are working in an organization they would always want that our intern or our employees develop solutions which are which are i would say which are people facing right like whatever you build is somewhere or the other driving business values so i learned to code or i learned to do data science in the way the industry wants and i could not have learned that from any courses or something like that because i have not done it myself first so internships give you that exposure that okay how things really work in industry and as you are intern they also understand that okay this person is here to learn we will train them and then we will also groom them to uh, do data science in a right way for the industry so definitely it helps it helps you to understand yourself that whether this is some this is the domain which i love working on or this is something which i would really enjoy right because once you do those internships maybe in a data science domain or something like that two years down the line you might be working as a data scientist like me right so you could also analyze and assess that whether you would enjoy working as a data scientist eight hours a day in a job or maybe if you oh, if you open your own startup would you enjoy doing something around data science so that's a first check and doing an internship really prepares you professionally that how should you communicate how should you do uh, the coding usually we students don't have the habit of proper commenting in the codes and uh, we usually declare variable names uh, just like a b c d and uh, I, we will rem remember it down the line but when you are in an organization when you are interning there are protocols right where you need to code in such a way that that code would be read or reviewed by 20 other people in the team so you need to 
develop those things professionally and that would come with time so when you have to join the industry as a full time person as you graduate before that itself you know how industry works what the industry looks in you what are the various things that you need to take care of while doing your work in the industry okay very nice um what motivated you to start your experience as a mentor as a mentor yeah so uh this is a very personal personal story why i'm telling this because uh, when i started my data science journey it was uh, it was not a very targeted kind of thing that i want to do data science only i was open to multiple other domains as usually a btech student would be so when i joined my btech computer science in 2017 i was uh, open to various other options like mobile development app development like a, as a usual software engineering student would go through so in my first year i used to go to certain events like the meetups that you tell or hackathons that you tell without knowing that without knowing the best of python or best of java i just used to go and uh, try to see that what are they talking and something like that so there in each hackathon i went or in each event i went there was a person who selflessly uh, talked and net and made myself comfortable that okay hey if you want to do this these are the things that you need to look the, if you want to do that these are the things that you need to do so i got personally benefited a lot from all the mentorship that i have got during my initial days so i thought that if if i have got so much benefits from mentoring uh, by unknown people i i didn't know them right like even before going to the events i never knew that a person like this exists or something like that but they came selflessly help and something like that so i just uh, started mentoring as my way to give back to the community that whatever whatever i learned from those people i was just trying to give back to the community and see that okay uh, i have been benefited now let me uh, utilize my skills and experiences whatever little i have to help groom someone or something like that so that's where the journey of mentoring started and i also started my own uh, mentoring group kind of thing which was told 100 days of ml where i mentored a lot of students around 3900 or some something people so the students and uh, some working professionals so it was majorly like i was learning and they were also learning we all were learning together so from there i kept that uh, fire of mentoring someone while also getting mentored and uh, it's it's a continuous process i still have been doing and i have been also getting mentored from people who are in the industry it's not that if i am mentoring someone i have stopped getting mentoring it's like i am getting mentored from the left, from the people who are a little higher than me and i am also mentoring the people who are a little uh, like maybe in the first year second year or something like that of the college so it's a it's a continuous process and that's how it works and i'm enjoying the journey okay uh so how did you started your journey in this domain like what motivated you uh so what motivated me was uh like in 2017 when i joined my btech i used to have a facebook account and uh, i know i never wanted that to uh, deactivate or delete but somehow somehow in 2017 i used to have that and then there was a very boom of uh he see the recommendations that you get on facebook the advertisements that you get on facebook are very personalized or something like that so uh, like i i am a dog dog lover so a lot of a lot of advertisements a lot of posts or something like that on facebook used to come something in the domains i loved so that that made me intrigued that okay how how is this platform able to know that okay this person loves talking about dogs or this person loves to chat to people randomly about talk, uh, dogs or something like that so somewhere i started googling at, in 2017 there was no chat gpt right so we need to still go back to old days of google search and uh, write that okay how do they do this or something like that from there i came across a blog which mentioned that all of this is done through the dom- through the way of utilizing your personal data to suggest you or to give you certain recommendations so that was the first uh, introduction of mine to this domain that okay this is this domain can be helpful in this that was a sheer coincidence that i took the things a little farther from my facebook account right like how facebook 
ads work led to my journey of data science and sadly my data uh, my facebook account was deleted later uh, that, that was personal uh, like no facebook didn't took my <laughs> uh, facebook account randomly right so i started my journey from there and then i started like my first uh, goal was to make certain recommendation system like that like which i saw on facebook but given that i was in first year of college i never knew much of python or these kind of projects are very scalable things right like if you are making a model which can serve to millions of people on facebook or millions of millions of people on instagram it's a big thing so but that somewhat sparked the thing that okay i need to do i need to learn data science because this has the potential of doing xyz things so that's where it started and then i learned linear algebra statistics i have not said learned uh like i had already been aware of those terms uh, right right after uh, right after class 12 graduate like passing class 12 we are we are already uh, studying those things right like linear algebra calculus probability and things so i just tried thinking that okay i know this and somehow that internal instinct of being a math stopper at school so that came across and i just started my journey that okay people tell maths is needed maths is needed and i being the school topper of maths i had that i would say overconfidence to to start something into uh, something into data science and then the journey started then i started building projects then again the cycle came to dogs dogs versus cat classifier so i the my first project was that being a dog lover so i made that project and then uh, improved a little learned something new and then grew yeah that was really an interesting story so the next question is any suggestions for hacker participating in hackathons regarding time management and presenting their ideas uh so i think this is where the winners do the things right in most of the hackathons which i have lost i have lost them because i somehow faltered at these things time management communication so when i talk about time management it also comes into team management right you cannot yourself manage the time in a hackathon because you are working with four other people or three other people in a hackathon so first of all when whenever it's time management it's also team management and within team management you need to be sure by dividing the works very specifically that who would be doing what and who is responsible for building something and then you can divide your schedule like let's say it's a 36 hours hackathon you can divide Uh, your 30 hours in such a way that the person who is responsible for a ml model or the person who is responsible for building a application so like that all of them are aware that they need to deliver this they are they are the owner of this so once that comes in you need to then chunk uh, like divide the bigger task into smaller tasks that's where you need to make sure that your time lines are being taken care of because whenever we are building a big project we usually forget about timelines and etc because a lot of things needs to be done but even before starting to code or something like that always make sure that you break the entire project into small small pieces and each small pieces is given a timeline that okay i will take 1 hour or 2 hours to do this or some or some other extra hours to do this along with dividing the big big task within your team into multiple small components and with allocating each person in your team to something specific that hey you would be looking into this and something like that so whenever i have done this well there were greater chances i came into top 3 or top 5 second part was on the communications part like you might have like as i told in the initials like you might have the best of ideas best of solutions but jo dikhta hai wo bikhta hai if you cannot sell if you cannot communicate what you are building why are you building whom are you building for the judges or the mentors might not be able to judge you correctly that what actually your solution is why are you building it why there is a need so you need to communicate and how would you communicate it's like be clear on your basics that what why and how of your project what are the what because of which you are building that what are the why for which you are building that and what are the hows you are building that make sure that you have answers to these three you would be able to make a better pitch or communication during your final judging rounds okay so the last question what are some beginner friendly platforms for getting started with data science uh beginner friendly platforms i would say start with kaggle 
not the Kaggle competitions I'm saying, but Kaggle as a platform has Kaggle Learn courses. So as you kickstart your journey from Kaggle Learn courses, you will be uh, you will be able to learn small small data science concepts within a day or within two days. While also if you're getting stuck, you have a Kaggle community, you can go and ask. So Kaggle as a platform would definitely be something which I would suggest. Second is go towards LinkedIn Learning or Coursera, which have courses on introduction to machine learning, introduction to data science, introduction, introduction to artificial intelligence kind of thing. So go and check them. Like it's like a lot of students feel overwhelmed that, okay, how many, there are so many courses, how many of them can I do or something like that. No one is telling you to do each and every course, at least kickstart. And then whenever you see a next course, just try to see what are, what are the new things in that course, which you don't know. So then specifically learn those components and move ahead. So these are the things that I would suggest. Start with Kaggle, then Coursera, LinkedIn Learning. This would be great to move ahead. Okay. Uh, so that's a wrap up of tonight's discussion. I want to extend a heartfelt thank you to our incredible guest speaker, Ayun Roy, for sharing your wisdom and insights with us. Uh, I also want to thank all our listeners for tuning in. So that's all. Stay connected. Sure. Thank you so much and wishing all the participants all the best for the upcoming hackathon. So yeah, best of luck. Bye-bye. Thank you.